Today we're going to be doing another video about Odroids. This time it's an add-on for the Odroid that's been around for quite some time. This is the 4-channel network card. This is our 4-channel Ethernet network card. This aside, and here is the network card itself. As you will see from the card, it's quite small, and its main feature are these four Ethernet ports. This card is designed to fit into the M.2 slot on the underneath of an Odroid board. So if we bring out one of our Odroids, and this is an Odroid H3, although the previous revision of the Odroid is still quite capable of supporting this card. As you will see, we've already populated the two memory slots of the Odroid H3, and our new card will fit in quite nicely into the back of a Odroid. Now we have to be quite careful when we're slotting this in. Should slot in like so. And our mounting holes should be lined up. And we've got three mounting screws in the bag. So we have three mounting positions we'll need to attach. The first one we'll put in from the top of the board. Now that we have the board fitted, we can now see the four Ethernet ports below the surface of the main board. So this gives us a total of six Ethernet ports, each of which is 2.5 gigabits per second. As you can tell from the cross section of our board, this will not fit into many of the existing cases. However, we're going to be mounting this in one of our custom cases, so the fact that it is slightly deeper in size is not going to bother us. Now that we have occupied the M.2 slot, we can no longer fit an SSD into this slot, so we will have to use one of our SATA connectors to connect to either an SSD or a hard disk or use a small EMC card. In this case, I think I'm going to be using an SSD going in to one of our SATA slots. Of course, adding these four Ethernet ports onto your board does mean you have to flash the BIOS, as we did in a previous video where we flashed the BIOS on an H4 board. The Odvide website has, of course, each of the BIOSes you can download for each of the models and we'll need to download the BIOS for the H3 model. This will take the four PCIe lanes that are fed normally to the M2 slot, divide it into four one-channel lanes. But before we launch into reflashing the BIOS on this board, we need to get it mounted in a frame and add the power supply, fan and storage. As with many of these projects, I'm going to build a maker beam frame around the computer, the design of which can evolve during the life of the project. Some large motherboard standoffs were needed to accommodate the addition of the four new Ethernet ports under the motherboard. As this computer is likely to be rack mounted, I fitted an 80mm fan behind the Odroid to allow airflow over the heatsink and vented out of the back of the rack. I've offset the motherboard in the frame to create space for both the solid state drive and a small 80 watt power supply, recycled from a previous build. This HDplex 80 watt power supply is unfortunately no longer manufactured, but it is ideal for this project as the computer is unlikely to draw more than 60 watts. This will eliminate the need for an external power brick, 
as the HDPlex PSU outputs 19 volts. I'm going for a Lexar 1.9 GB solid state drive, vertically mounted between the PSU and the Odroid motherboard. This will allow short SATA power and data cables to be used. There is also enough space to fit a second solid state drive should that be required later in the project. As this is an H3 Plus Odroid, it only has two SATA sockets. You may ask why I'm using an H3 Plus model of Odroid rather than one of the new H4 models. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, I had a spare H3 Plus, and secondly, to show that the H3 Plus, which is still being sold by Odroid, can still be upgraded and perform useful tasks. So now we have the Odroid fully cabled up and ready to have the BIOS flashed, an operating system installed, and start some serious testing. But we'll do that in the next video. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.